Hi there. Today we will learn how I can notice and understand the poetic or descriptive language used to show the setting. When we read a fiction book, it's really important to look at the language that the author uses in order that we can visualize and understand the setting of that book better, as well as then we grow to appreciate the author and the book more as well. So to look into this concept, we're going to look at two books we've read before. We have Snook Alone, as well as A Symphony of Wales. I'm going to read a little bit from each book, and then we'll look at the writer's words and, and think about what do the words show us. As I read from Snook Alone, think about which words help you imagine and understand the setting. What does the author want you to picture in your mind? Listen here. Like the other islands, Avocare was a mile-long crescent of beach surrounding a higher ground of pemphis marshes, salt-resistant bushes, papaya, and casuarina trees, and coconut palms with bare guano-covered circles where boobies, frigate, birds, and terns nested. What great mice! Snook had never worked so hard. A black line thickened on the horizon. The mood of the sea darkened. Ripples became waves. Waves became breakers. Abba Jacob hurried toward the boat, whistling and calling, Snooky boy, come! Snook, come! So we have a few quotes here from Snook alone. Mile-long crescent of beach, salt-resistant bushes, papaya, and casuarina trees. So what can we gather when we listen to these words from the author? If you were thinking about, or were talking to yourself there, that these two quotes talk about what the island looks like, you're right. That's the best kind of thing that the words are showing us right now. And then later on in Snook Alone, it says, a black line thickened on the horizon. So that showed us a storm is coming. He didn't blatantly say, or sorry, Marilyn Nelson did not blatantly say that a storm is coming. She said, a black line thickened on the horizon, right? And now we have our second example here in A Symphony of Wales. As I read a section here of, of Symphony of Wales, think about what do you notice about how the author describes the bay? What does the author want you to feel, see, hear, and know about this place? Listen up. The sled dogs pulled harder. Their keen ears could pick up high-pitched notes that most humans could not hear. But Galashka, if she turned just right, could make out the eerie moans and whistles that grew louder even until her parents could hear them. The dogs stopped short. They were right at the edge of a great bay of open water, surrounded on all sides by ice and snow. Everywhere Galashka looked, the water seemed to be heaving and boiling, choked with white whales. Her father came up beside her. Beluga whales, he said softly. So a couple quotes from the author here. A great bay of open water, surrounded by all sides by ice and snow. Thinking about that descriptive language, what does the author want us to know about this bay? How cold and icy the bay is. That's how, that's what this descriptive language will share with us. The water seemed to be heaving and boiling, choked with white whales. So do you think choked with white whales? Do you think there's just one or two? It gives us not just the number, but it gives us a visual as well, too. So what do you notice about the writer's language from both stories? What do you notice? It's poetic. It's descriptive. 
And poetic and descriptive language helps us imagine the setting and feel, see, hear, and understand certain things. Now today, read a fiction book. When you read the fiction book, look at the language that the author uses to describe the setting. Take note of it. You can put a sticky note, take a screenshot, take a picture, whatever way is best for you, and then be ready to share how you can notice and understand the poetic or descriptive language used to show the setting in your fiction book.